still remember him so perfectly. Sometimes when I close my eyes, I can actually see him. And when I go to sleep, it's like he's still there. And he needs me. What are you feeling right now? How much I love him. How much I miss him. My mother died so long ago. I never really knew her. But it never really mattered as long as I had Daddy. When the doctors told him he was sick, he just seemed to give up. I walked into his room. He'd taken an overdose of his pills. And he was just lying there. It's been over three years. Do you think your father would want you to continue grieving over his death for such a long time? But I don't remember him that way. I remember the way he was in my dreams. Calling to me. I know. I'm afraid we're out of time for today. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm okay. Good. Now we're going to pick up right here at our next session. She just left. It went exactly as I said it would. She's ready for phase two. It's all arranged. We'll start tonight. Anything else, Miss Van Horn? No, thank you. Who's there?
sore loser. Sore loser? What do you mean, sore loser? St. Leo made the winning basket after the buzzer. Well, clean your glasses. Between the time the shot went up and the buzzer went off, you could have said a Hail Mary. And the officiating was absolutely disgraceful. They missed one foul after another. You're just mad because my team won. Now pay up. Oh. Come on, you made the bet. Five bucks. One, two, three, I know. Four, five, there you go. My youth group will have chocolate chip cookies this week. Yeah. Say, Michaels. Yeah? It's the police. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll be right there. Thank you very much. It's Carol Van Horn. She's in some kind of trouble. Well, let's go. We're looking for one of our parishioners, uh, Carol Van Horn. Finishing a statement. Is she all right? Oh, other than being very scared, she seems to be okay. I sent a man out to her place to check out her story, but didn't find anything to substantiate it. The housekeeper said that she's got something of a history. Yeah, her father committed suicide there, and it's been very traumatic for her. So traumatic she went to a sanitarium. I'm afraid so, yes. Could she come with us? I don't see why not. Hi, Carol. Hi. Hi. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to drag you up in the middle of the night. I just didn't know who else to call. Oh, we're glad no, you that's did. That's okay. That's all right. Here, come on, put this on. Yeah. Cups. I'm a Sox fan. I won't hold it against you. Come on, let's get out of here. There you go, lady. This cocoa really hit the spot. Well, it's my specialty. Particularly when all you have to do is add hot milk. <laughs> You've both been very kind. Mm. I, um, have to ask you this. Do you believe me? I mean, about what happened tonight? We have no reason not to believe you, Carol. And we really care about you. That's still not quite the same thing as believing you, though, is it? Steve, I think you should stay with Carol for a while.
sleep? Finally. I'm telling you, Frank, I saw it too. She is not crazy. At least not yet, you know, but she's gonna be if this whatever it is keeps coming back to haunt her. We have got to find out what's going on over there. The house is haunted. That's what's going on over there. I think I'd like to take a look around. It was right over there by the bed. What are you looking for, Frank? Well, could be anything. Fiber optics, lasers. And we won't necessarily recognize it, even if we find it. We don't have a clue. Well, I guess we better find one. Oh, hello, Father. Oh, hello, Marie. I see Father Dowling has gone out. Any idea when he'll be back? You know, Father Dowling, he comes and he goes. Hmm, like all of us. Rushing here and there on our petty tasks, and when the final day of reckoning comes, what have we accomplished? Personally, I just salted the roast. You know, I thought being the bishop's troubleshooter would lead to great things, but sometimes I, I, it just seems like a dead end. Well, if you'll excuse me, I've got to go and do the laundry. You know, I really wanted to go over to Parish Groves with Father Dowling. Do you know where he's gone? As a matter of fact, he and Sister Steve have gone out prowling around a haunted house. No, you're joking. I never joke about things like that. You mean a possession? An actual possession? It wouldn't be a haunted house without a ghost, now would it? This is where I hang out. Having a church service in here? Who are you? The gardener. But what are you doing down here? Looking for the big rake. What's the matter? You think I was one of those spooks? <laughs> Could have fooled me. Good morning. Good morning. How you feeling? Better, thanks. Carol, we went over to your house to look around. Find anything? Not yet. Has uh, anyone ever tried to get you out of your house? A man did offer to buy the house, but I told him I wasn't interested. Who was that? A Mr. Hopkins. Douglas Hopkins, a real estate developer? Yeah, he's the one. Could we have your permission to stay there tonight? Sure. But shouldn't I be there, too? It's best if we go alone. I think I should go with you. Carol, if it's a ghost, he's going to show up whether you're there or not. And if it's someone playing tricks on you, well, we have one or two tricks we can play ourselves. check out the downstairs. I'll be back in a few minutes, Carol. As long as it's not past midnight. <laughs> oh, I didn't see you. How is Carol? Oh, she's uh, very comfortable for the moment. You don't expect me to make dinner for you, do you? Oh, no. Good, because I'm going to bed. I love this part. <laughs> Marie, 
I have to go home. No, Father Dolly said you were to stay overnight. He and Sister Steve will be there. I'll be okay. Uh, just relax and watch the movie. You're gonna love it. Ah, Father Dobby. Father Presswick. What are you doing here? I heard about your little apparition. Oh, well, I'm not sure what it is, if, if anything. Well, you haven't told the bishop, have you? No, I don't want to tell him until I have something positive to report. Positive? like a verifiable supernatural manifestation? If I can actually document a demonic apparition, then I will notify His Excellency, who will then notify the diocesan exorcist. But first, we'll need proof. So I gathered some equipment, and here I am. What have you got in there, bell book and candle? <laughs> Hardly. I borrowed His Eminence's video camera. We'll need to document this. I think we could be in something very, very exciting here, Father Dowling. I'm kind of excited. So, uh, this is the room where he uh, did away with himself? Yeah. Well, and logic tells us this is the place for him to reappear. Logic has nothing to do with this. Uh, could you, um, could you kill your flashlight for a second, Father Dowling? I want to, want to set my video levels. Mm -hmm. Besides, you won't, you won't appear if there is too much light. <laughs> You're funny about that. You know, it's only 11.30. He's not going to appear till midnight. Good point, good point. Hmm. How did you happen to fall in? I didn't fall in. I jumped in to save George. You what? You're... To save me? Well, I did, didn't I? You didn't go through with it, did you? What? Suicide. Oh, yeah, it's against the law to commit suicide around here. Yeah, it's against the law where I come from, too. Where do you come from? Heaven? I had to act quickly. That's why I jumped in. I knew if I were drowning, you'd try to save me. You see, you did. And that's how I saved you. Uh, uh, very funny. Your lip's bleeding, George. Yeah, I'm gonna bust on the jaw and answer to a prayer a little bit ago. Oh, no, 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 George, I'm the answer to your prayer. What time have you got, Father? One minute to midnight. I've got midnight already. I always like to set my watch at least two minutes ahead. Because I... Steve, Father Dowling? Carol, what are you doing here? I had to come. Oh, you've got to get out of here. He's going to be here any second. Oh, you must be the young lady who... Who's he? Oh, I'm, I'm Father Prestwick. I'm with the diocese. I'm going to be making a record of... Carol. Carol, I'm here. I've come to touch you. Go away. That was incredible. I only hope I got that on videotape. <laughs> I told you so, Frank. Now don't you worry, Carol. We're going to get to the bottom of this and make him go away forever. I don't want him to go away. I just want to be with him. <laughs> Dansky and the gardener were in their rooms. They didn't hear anything. I don't believe it. I called Carol Shrink and he came right over. He's upstairs now. Here he comes. Dr. Latimer, I'm Father Dowling from St. Michael's. Yeah, so Carol told me. How is she, doctor? I've just given her a sedative. She's sleeping. Oh, that's good. Father, I must ask you not to encourage her in these delusions. Doctor, we both saw exactly what she saw. Yeah, we didn't even know she was going to show up. Let me put it this way. 
We're talking about the emotional well-being of a very disturbed young woman. We can appreciate that, Doctor, but Carol is not delusional. Father, with all due respect, I think I'll make that evaluation. Doctor, we just want to help Carol. You know, if you really want to help, you can get her out of this house. Carol is very fragile. She could have a psychotic break. She could end up back in the sanitarium indefinitely. Why don't you go up and stay with Carol? I'll look in on you later. Where are you going, Frank? Oh, I'm just going to have a look around. Be careful. doing up here? I was going to ask you the same thing. I'm just keeping an eye on Carol. It's Carol's bedroom. I worry about her. With all that's been going on, I just wanted to make sure she was safe. So you watch her in the middle of the night through a peephole? You told me you sleep all night, every night. I don't have to stand here and be grilled like a heretic. And what good have you done for her? I'd like to see Mr. Hopkins, please. Do you have an appointment? No, I just happened to drop by, hoping he'd spare a few minutes. Father, believe me, he wouldn't see the Pope himself without an appointment. I'll pray for a miracle.
father. I'm Douglas Hopkins. Father Dowling, St. Michael's. How good of you to see me. Please, come in. Thank you. It's a miracle. Have a seat. Thank you. Well, how can I help you, Father? Well, I'm a good friend of Carol Van Horn's, and I was wondering if you were still interested in purchasing the Van Horn home. Is it for sale? There's been some discussion. Oh, it's a great old place. My father used to take me by there when I was a little boy, full of history. Really? Oh, it was originally built for Anna Held, the actress. Then gentleman Jim Corbett, the heavyweight champ, moved in around the turn of the century. And the 20s, Jake Greasy Thumb Gusick, the gangster, lived there. It's a great old place. But then you're still interested. Oh, I don't know, Father. I wanted to give it to the city as a museum, you know, a historical landmark, something like that. So it didn't really break my heart when Miss Van Horn didn't want to sell. Frankly, I've got other projects in the work, so I guess the answer is no. Mm. Well, I just thought I'd ask. Well, it's been nice talking to you, Father. Mm. I appreciate you giving me the time. By the way, you're uh, into electronics as well as real estate, aren't you? I'm into a lot of things, Father. It's how I keep my head above water. <laughs> While I was waiting to see you, I just happened to browse through one of your brochures on three-dimensional holograms. Oh, are you into that kind of thing? I don't understand it at all, but it certainly is interesting. Well, neither do I, and yes, it is. But it's still in research and development. It'll be a long time before we're able to make money on it. Mm. Well, don't get discouraged. I try not to. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. about a story. You want to see Mr. Simpson, next office over there. Thanks. Oh, are you, uh, are you lost, sister? Are you Mr. Simpson? Yeah. Then I'm not lost. Are you in the market for a bizarre story? Of course I'm in the market for a bizarre story. This is in the National Review, you know. I know. Uh, come on, come into my office. Okay, sister, what do you got? Well, one of the altar boys at St. Michael saw a Guernsey cow that glows in the dark. Why? Well, what do you mean, why? Well, I mean, did the cow spontaneously combust? Was it I mean, kidnapped by aliens? You know, did it swallow a nuclear bomb? Why, why is it glowing in the dark? He didn't say. <sighs> Jesus, you know, I gotta have a hook for the story. Either that or pictures. Have you ever done anything on a haunted house? Gee, your timing's bad, sister. We already got a haunted house piece in the works right now. This wouldn't by any chance be from a tall woman in a black cape and a hat, would it? Well, she's in there being interviewed right now. Do you know her? Well, she's got a lot of nerve. What do you mean? Well, isn't it unethical to sell the same story to two magazines? She did that? I'm lucky she didn't sell them my cow story. Gee, how do you like that? Well, thanks for telling us. Don't mention it. You know, I'll, I'll try to get you a picture of that cow. Color would be great. Better make sure she has some pictures. the hell did you have to do it when the priest was there? It's an automatic, Mr. Hopkins. I set it on a timer. It goes off every night at midnight. Why the hell did you do that? 
So I'd have an alibi in case somebody came to check me out. Well, now you got the priest snooping around. Well, I don't see how he could be on anything. Nobody knows about Guzik's vault but us. You know, Martin, I'm getting real tired of waiting to see what's inside. But it's gonna be worth it. That old Con and Joliet guaranteed me Guzik kept his most valuable stuff socked away in there. But we can't open it as long as the girl is in the house. You're right about that, Mr. Hopkins. You know, it's gonna take dynamite to crack that baby. Go back to the house. It's me. What do you want? What do I want? I want results. Don't worry, she's almost ready to self-destruct. Hey, you've been saying that for weeks. It's me you're driving crazy, not her. Now, whatever is inside, I want it, and I want it now. I don't care how you get rid of her, but get her the hell out of there. I'll see to it. When? Tonight. been at the Hall of Records. I had to change buses three times to get home. Well, I've got big news about Mrs. Dansky. Yeah, well, I got some news, too. I went she's to see her. She's selling Hopkins. her story to the National... I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. Father Dowling, I have amazing news. What is your amazing news, Father? Documentary proof that this ghost exists. I got him on tape after all. Come inside and I'll show you. Where's Carol? I don't know. I've been calling her all afternoon. She's not answering her phone. Come on, Father Dowling. Try her again and spread this out on my desk, huh? Okay. Right where? Right there. But that's Steve. No, no, that's me. No, not you, that. Wait, wait, I'll run it backwards in slow motion. No, that's all right, Father. I I've seen enough. <laughs> well, when the bishop sees this, he's bound to authorize an exorcism. Well, I wouldn't mention this to the bishop quite yet. This whole thing may turn out to be technological rather than supernatural. Father Dowling, I was there. I know a ghost when I see one. Hey, would you excuse me for a minute, Father? I have to make a phone call. I'll rewind. Still no answer, Frank. Mm. Dr. Latimer, Father Dowling. Uh, Sister Stephanie and I, we've been trying to get a hold of Carol Van Horn. I suggested that she take a few days off just to try and get a hold of herself. But I don't know if she took my advice. She really does. Mm. Well, thanks, Doctor. Uh, if you hear from her, we'd certainly appreciate a call. Of course, absolutely. Goodbye. <laughs> put an end to all those things that are making you so unhappy. I don't want to be selfish about this, Father Dowling. I'm perfectly happy to share any credit with, with you and Sister Stephanie. Oh, that's all right, Father. You can run with this one all by yourself. Good night. Good night. Huh. Come on, I want to show you what I found at City Hall. Hopkins told me all about the history of the Van Horn house. You know, a lot of famous people live there, and one of them was a gangster, 
Jake Greasy Thumb Guzik. It must have been before my time. Yeah, well, Guzik was one of the kingpins of crime in Chicago during the 20s until they put him away at Alcatraz. But while he lived in the house, he made some alterations. Well, according to this, it says that there's a vault underneath the basement. You know, we must have been standing right on top of that when we ran into the gardener. And I think that that vault is the reason that Hopkins wants to get hold of the place. He'd dig it up, take out what he wanted, and then turn the house over to the city as a museum. Minus the most valuable exhibit. Mm -hmm. But look at this. It looks like a secret room, Frank. With a concealed entrance in the basement. Do you know what you could do if you had a secret room and you rigged it with three-dimensional hologram projectors? What? You could haunt a house. Didn't you say that Hopkins was into high-tech electronics? Owns his own research company. I'm gonna call Carol again. We don't want to be disturbed. It may be Sister Steve or Father Dowling. They may be worried about me. Oh, I've already spoken to Father Dowling. After tonight, he'll have nothing to worry about. Neither will you. It's almost midnight. Come on, Carol, let's go. He's waiting. He's waiting for you. I'm afraid. I'll be right outside. Go on in, Carol. This is the answer, believe me. gonna die unless we stop her. For God's sake, man, is Hopkins paying you enough to be a party to murder? I thought we were just gonna throw a little scare into her. Shut that thing off!
She's still gonna take the pills. Got to do something. It's not the real me, but an incredibly lifelike simulation. Mr. Hopkins? Yes? You're under arrest for the attempted murder of Carol Van Horn. You too, Dr. Latimer. Nice job, Clancy. Thanks to you. Oh, Mr. Hopkins. The police dug up the safe that Greasy Thumb Guzik had planted in his basement. And this was what was so valuable to him. It's a plan for escaping from Alcatraz. we ought to do with this. We could send it to Geraldo. <laughs> oh, I'll call you as soon as I get back. You sure you'll be all right? <laughs> I think all my ghosts are gone this time. Well, you take care of yourself, huh? Thanks, Father. The young lady has no comment. What happened, Father? Oh, well, uh, here's a man who can explain everything. This is Father Philip Presley. How did you discover the hoax, Father? The what? Oh, come now, Philip. Don't be modest. Just tell them how you found out that the ghost was a fake. Ah, that. Yes. Well, naturally, we were suspicious from the beginning, although there was no hard evidence of anything. Uh, you know, in cases like this, um, uh, I always believe that... So you're letting him grab all the credit? Hmm? Oh, it looks better on him. Sister Stephanie? Boo. Boo. 